In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to change your body composition. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rabella from ProPhysique.com. It's Wednesday afternoon and my video schedule a little messed up today, but Lauren and I got a podcast done this morning. And so it's a really good podcast. It was just Lauren and I, but the topic was cardio, all types of cardio. So look for that, redefine healthy radio. If you're not following us on all of the social media outlets, check it out. It's on a podcast, iTunes and SoundCloud and whatever. Just Google redefine healthy radio and you can hear Lauren and I talk about cardio. So for today's video, cardio is very related to body composition. So I got a comment, someone said, hey, can you talk about changing your body composition? I think that's a very good question. It's something that a lot of us go through during our fitness journeys, changing goals, changing you know, how we look, feel about ourselves, and body composition is a, is a term that gets thrown around quite a bit. So what is body composition? Well, body composition, quite simply, is just the amount of body fat and muscle that you have on your frame. So when you change body composition, you can actually shift how you look and feel based on how much muscle you carry or how much body fat you carry, right? So how do we go about changing that? What does that look like? What does that mean? Well, the easiest way to really change body composition is by losing body fat. When you lose body fat, you therefore improve your body composition. By improve, I mean you have more lean body mass compared to body fat mass. And uh, that generally looks better. But there is such a thing as recomping. Recomping is basically when you get to a place where your body fat gets low enough and you want to start putting on some muscle without putting on body fat again. And then you want to uh, focus on allowing yourself to get stronger, put on some lean body mass without putting body fat on quickly. And that process, it's very slow. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, fat loss happens quickly. So I think for most of us, when we talk about body composition, changing our goals, it can be really easy to be hyper-focused on the scale going down and fat loss. But I wanna be very clear, there's a big difference between just losing body fat and adding muscle or losing body fat and also losing muscle because the body changes in drastic ways when we are so hyper focused on just doing let's say cardio and super low calories right you're not going to retain a lot of muscle there is an interference effect between cardio and weight training right so let's say you do a ton of endurance training you're going to lose some muscle mass okay you're going to lose some gym performance you're going to lose lean body mass which for our long term goals depending on what they mean what they may be it may be good for you but for the most of us that watch this channel that are interested in changing our physiques for the better we don't want to lose too much lean body mass right there's some negative connotations with losing lean body mass your metabolic rate's a little bit slower you won't have as hard a look you know there's a term that gets thrown around the internet quite a bit called skinny fat that's where your body weight can be in the healthy, skinny, nice, lean range, but because you don't have a lot of muscle density, um, you're just kind of, your skin kind of feels soft. So even though you might look nice and clothes, you don't look good naked, that kind of thing. So what I want to talk about now is how do we ensure that doesn't happen? Well, the most important thing, the most important is resistance training. People will often say, what's more important, diet? What's more important, training? Well, when it comes to having lean body mass, doesn't matter how perfect your diet is. You can have the most perfect diet. If you never do any type of training, that doesn't mean you have to go to the gym. You can do any type of exercise that allows you to put on some lean body mass. But if you're not doing any type of exercise, you will not have lean body mass unless you're just genetically predispositioned to walk around with heaps of muscle. I'm not one of those guys. If I don't lift weights, my body loves to be skinny, right? I have to pound the weights consistently or I notice certainly negative body composition changes amongst myself. I'm sure a lot of you guys are like that as well. I think for most of us, resistance training is a lifestyle that the longer we do it, 
the better it sticks around, the more we keep it. So I've been training for 20 something years. I have noticed my body composition has definitely improved over that time. How fast does it happen for you? So much of it comes down to genetic predisposition. I feel like a lot of times that gets downplayed, but you know, growing up, you probably noticed people that just seemed to be kind of muscular without really trying or just walked around with nice muscle tone or great muscle shapes without really trying. And that's just because they had a great disposition for muscle insertions and, and uh, muscle. We also want to focus a lot of our efforts on type 2 muscle fibers, the explosive type of muscles, okay? If you turn a lot of your, there are so many different types of muscle fiber types in the body that will convert based on what your training style is, right? So they can convert to type one or type two. There's a lot of variations in there. And actually Dr. Campbell last semester was talking a lot about they're still discovering new muscle fiber types, but we're not gonna go off on a tangent on muscle fiber types. We're just gonna talk about type one, which are slow twitch, endurance type, and type two, which are fast twitch. Um, the fast twitch, they're obviously a little more dense, a little more fuller. If you look at like a genetically predispositioned sprinter, the sprinters in the Olympics, for example, those people are predominantly type two muscle fiber people. They get really jacked looking and muscular, um, and obviously an explosive sport like sprinting is going to enhance that look. And then versus if you look at someone that runs um, long distance, marathons, endurance events, they tend to switch to more of a type one look. There's always going to be you know, variables within those, but those are two very genetic terms. I don't wanna to get too far off on that, but if you're looking to improve your body composition or change your body composition, and you're someone who has historically been a endurance athlete, I've got some great case studies of my clients who came to me as endurance athletes and just didn't wanna run 50 miles a week anymore, and we transition them into resistance training to put on muscle and then we transition them out of doing so much endurance cardio. Now, if you love running and love cycling and love swimming, I'm not gonna tell you not to do that, but it just depends about what your goal is. If your goal is to have a different body composition, you may have to change a little bit about what you're doing. All right, guys, hopefully that explains a little bit about body composition. The general rules of thumb are switch to a resistance training program. Um, you do need to make sure you're taking in enough protein that your diet is in check. And um, you know the general rule of thumb for, for protein is a gram per pound to build muscle. So the research says 0.8, you know, is all you need. And you know, there's some research. Uh, my buddy Chris just posted something yesterday that said 1.5 to 2 grams while bulking is very good for you. So there's a lot of variation within that. I'm not going to get too caught up in that. But if you are doing resistance training, um, you know, pushing yourself, taking in a gram of protein. Um, per pound of you know lean body mass or body weight or however you want to do it you know those are just rough ideas and you're doing this for a long period of time and you're not making cardiovascular endurance type training your primary focus you will see an improvement in body composition all right and um, you know within that there are definitely variances and more specific details but for this video I just wanted to discuss how you can change your body composition, kind of how I've gone about it over my life. I've, I've always, always loved the weights in the gym um, and the nuances that go into it from supplementation. Thank you, Core Nutritionals, for the new shirt. Um, supplementation, diet, you know, rest periods, all these things are kind of enjoyable. But the most important variable is just that you lift, is just that you do some type of resistance training exercise. Um, I don't care if it's CrossFit, I don't care if it's this uh, German volume body recomposition program, which is basically like a, a full body workout where they're trying to take the focus into explosive lifting and training hard. I think these are great ideas. If you just find something that gets you in the gym, gets you lifting, gets you moving weight, gets you exercising in a way that's going to allow you to add some muscle, you're probably gonna have a lot of success and then you can explore nuances from there. That's gonna be it for me today, guys. Again, look for the Redefine Healthy Radio podcast, the all cardio episode today, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Oh, by myself.